You're probably going to think I'm mad, but I've just turned down a Steel Sports Rolex from an authorised dealer. Maybe I am mad. Oh, wait a minute. I might regret this. <laughs> So if you're new to the channel, my name's Simon and I mostly talk about watches. If you like watch content, why not click that subscribe button and go back and check out some of my other videos later. And guys, don't forget to give this video a like, because likes really help the channel to grow. So something happened to me a couple of weeks ago that I wanted to share with you today. Guys, if you're a regular listener to the blog to watch weekly podcast, then you might have already heard me talk about this uh, when I was on a recent episode with the absolute legend that is George Bamford. Now, I've long been an admirer of the Rolex Explorer 2. I think I've talked about it in some of my earlier videos. And I think that love started when my eldest brother picked one up. He's got an older reference. I think it's a 16570. And it just wears so well. It works really well on my wrists, which are pretty small at uh, just under six and a half inches. His has the white dial, and I just think it's such a cool watch. So earlier this year, I happened to be walking past my Rolex AD and I decided to inquire about the Explorer 2. I had about two years until my 50th birthday and I figured that this could be a really great 50th birthday present to myself, figuring that the waiting lists were probably going to be a year to 18 months. So I had a great conversation with the guy in the AD and they didn't have one that I could actually try on. But nevertheless, the conversation turned to whether I wanted to get onto a waiting list for one. And of course, how could I refuse? Now, I've never bought a Rolex new. I've got no Rolex purchase history and no purchase history with this AD. So when the guy took down all of my details and said that he was putting me on the list, I kind of wondered whether he was just saying that perhaps just to get rid of me. I mean, we've all heard how difficult it can be to get onto a waiting list for a Steel Sports Rolex, especially if you've got no prior purchase history. So I walked away from there that day, not really knowing whether I would ever get the call or not. So fast forward a few months to just a couple of weeks ago, my phone rings and it's a Rolex AD to ask if I still want the Rolex Explorer 2. Now, you can imagine my surprise, but I think this guy on the other end of the phone was possibly even more surprised than me because my answer was no. You see, in the interim, I'd actually had the chance to try on the newer model the 42mm 226570. And whilst it's only gone up from 40 to 42mm, that watch for me on the wrist felt like a much bigger, chunkier watch. And I really didn't feel that it suited me quite as well as the smaller, older version. Another reason is, is that since putting my name down on that list, I'd also acquired my Tudor Black Bay Pro, which I still absolutely love. I mean, this 39mm case size just suits my wrist perfectly. And it really scratched the itch for the Explorer 2. I mean, after all, it's heavily inspired by the Explorer 2 reference 1655, the one that's known as the Steve McQueen, even though Steve McQueen never actually wore one. So I haven't got the same desire or lust that I did have for an Explorer 2. Now, going back to that phone call, and when I tell the guy from the Rolex AD that I actually am going to decline and that I no longer want the Explorer 2, there was just silence at the end of the end of the line, and I think the guy was in complete shock. After a few moments, he composed himself and said, nobody's actually done this before. Nobody's actually told me they don't want the watch. Had you wondered if the next phone call I was gonna get was gonna be from Norris McWhorter, telling me that I made it into the Guinness Book of Records 2022 as the first person to turn down his Rolex AD. But the thing that's really struck me after that call was when I told a handful of people what had happened, the almost universal response was, well, why didn't you buy the watch anyway? And you could have flipped it and surely you could have made several thousand pounds. And I'm not talking here necessarily about other watch enthusiasts or collectors. I'm talking about ordinary people. I mean, one of them was my wife and she doesn't really know that much about watches. But it's clear that there's a commonly held perception now that watches can be an investment. And in particular, that Rolex watches are almost an asset class that will always go up in value. Now, I didn't deserve that watch because I didn't want it. And the next guy on the list behind me, well, that could have been his dream watch. And I would far rather that he had it 
rather than me if all I was going to do was try and sell the thing. And I think for me, this kind of highlights quite a sad side to this hobby. I buy watches that I love and that I want to wear. And sure, if I fall out of love with them, if I don't wear them for a while, then of course I'll sell them. And I'll put that money towards something that I love even more. And then I want even more at the time. I don't buy watches as investments. I mean, God only knows how much money I've probably lost on my watches over the years. And of course, I'm happy if my watches don't depreciate as much. You know, sure, if they hold their value, then that's great news when it comes to resale. But I don't buy them to invest or to speculate or to treat them like stocks and shares. But guys, you might think I'm wrong. You might have a different view and I'd love to hear what you think. So please tell me in the comments. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a like. I'll see you on the next one.